Okay, hi everybody, this is Ellen, and I'm um, giving you a little uh, video po podcast on how to edit Adobe Audition uh, for your voicers. You'll find um, that if you follow along with my voice and the uh, Adobe Audition on, on the screen that I'm sharing with you, it should be pretty straightforward. First thing you have to do is open Adobe Audition, so uh, a new project, uh, and it's a new audio uh, file and uh, not a waveform and not a uh, multi-track but a waveform file so new file uh, open um, and it name it so you'll get um, the pop-up box and you just give it a name for now uh, so you can say voice or project whatever it is and you save it to wherever you save it to your USB or your desktop or your hard drive laptop um, so you'll see the screen looks pretty usual. It has the two tracks, upper and lower, and the red lines and the white line in the middle, which means that you have your left and your right channels. Um, on the left side of the screen, you're going to see um, the bin, uh, which is where you're going to put all your raw material, your edited clips. Uh, that includes your narration, your natural sound, if you have any, and uh, your two interview or three interview clips. Now, these should already be edited already. Uh, so if you haven't done that, you should do that first, okay? If you have already edited those clips, uh, then you can just go File, Import, and then put those files in. Doesn't matter what order. Uh, as long as they're in the bin, then putting the whole story together will take you literally three or four minutes. Okay, maybe five. So. One thing to remember, if you want to edit your uh, raw materials in this project, then uh, do so here. You can import the entire interview and then pull a clip, uh, doing it in the waveform uh, side, not on the multi-track side. And so what you do is you drag your stuff in and you edit it first. Make sure, by the way, that um, your uh, files, when they're ready to be played, you have to make sure that they're at the right audio level, which is minus 9 to minus 12 decibels. And uh, if they're not, then to adjust them, you remember what to do, right? You um, command and select all the file, and then you get, uh, it's all in white, and you get a gray pop-up, and there's a little red, a gray button in the middle, which you can raise or lower with your mouse to raise or lower the volume so that it and then changes the file and it becomes minus 9 to minus 12 decibels most of the time. Anyhow, uh, once you've done all your editing and all the files are at the right decibels, then it's simply a matter of assembling the multi-track voicer. Okay, so now you have to open the multi-track uh, in order to edit. And that, where you find that is the very top left of your screen, there's two words. One says waveform and one says multi-track. Click on the word multi-track. You'll get a gray screen with a bunch of things on it and you'll see um, a pop-up a box. And so where it says the name of the file, fill it in with your name. So it would be Besner underscore uh, the name of the story skating rink underscore and the date so February 12th 2013 whatever it is save it to your desktop and um, or wherever you're saving it to your USB or your hard drive and we'll be ready to go okay so now we're gonna get to the actual editing of your voice uh, voicer and as you see there's a track that uh, four tracks that come up on the main screen um, don't worry about the little green plus or minus check mark. That's just something from my computer. Don't worry about it. So you see a bunch of tracks, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, you use the tracks as follows. The top track is for your natural sound. Your second track is where your voice is going to be. Your third track is where you're going to put your clips of your interviews. You can get up to 99 tracks, but uh, you know, we don't need to make a documentary. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag your natural sound from the left side top of your screen which is where the they are saved click on the file hold it you might get a pop-up that tells you uh warning uh this file is different than um compression than the other ones whatever it says just say okay and it'll uh convert it if you have to okay then you'll see it'll mm, appear in the topmost track keep it as far left as you can so we don't have any dead air let go and it'll open up then you do the same thing for the second track take your narration which you've recorded already 
and you pop it in onto the second track. So now what we have to make sure is that the top of the, the, the top line where the sound is doesn't drown out your narration, which it probably will, which it's supposed to until we do some fading. So here's the fading part. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that how you lined up your two tracks is that the second part of the, uh, the story, which is your narration part, um, is starting about two seconds after the wild sound or the natural sound starts. So if you take a look, you'll see that there's sort of um, one on top of the other, but the second track, the lower track, is about two seconds in, okay? And you can see where the red playhead is, and that's how I've done it. If it isn't that way, then right-click and hold, or left-click and hold, I should say, of your um, mouse, you should get a little arrow and a Celtic cross, and you'll be able to move your track, your green wave foil up and down in the track or left and right in the track until it's lined up with the red playhead. So it should look like this. The sound starts and plays full sound for two seconds, and then you come in afterwards with your first few words of your narration, okay? Once you're in that position, I'll show you how to fade. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the uh, top most track, which is the natural sound, and you're gonna see that there's two lines. There's a, 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 a whitish colored line and a yellow colored line. The white colored line, we don't want to touch. The yellow colored line above it, if you hover your mouse over it, you'll see it says volume. And that's what we want to play with in order to raise and lower the volume and fade. So basically, you take your mouse and you look at the yellow line that says volume and there's already a dot on it near the playhead. So just, just, just to the right of the red playhead, click with your mouse on the volume line and you'll make a dot and then pull your with your mouse hold on to that dot and you take the mouse and you pull the line downwards so you should be seeing the line flat horizontal until two seconds and then right after two seconds when you start talking you should have your um, yellow line going straight up and down 90 degrees so that it looks like there's no um, possibility that the natural sound will drown you out. So let, then you can play it in the meantime, pause and stop and play it and see how it sounds. Okay, so now you're going to do the same thing with your uh, clips that you did with the other two bits of sound. You're going to take it from your bin. You're going to drag it to the third line, the third track. So the only thing you have to do before you do that is move the playhead, the red line, to the spot during your narration where you've paused so that the clip can be inserted. Uh, so you might have to um, move the playhead halfway through till you find where it's paused and then line up your clip that you're bringing into your interview with the mayor or whoever it is, just to the right of the playhead where it's supposed to go. Okay, so now you have to um, do one more thing with your narration. You've got to be able to move the narration down in the track so that it won't play at the same time as the mayor's clip. So you take your mouse, you uh, hover it over the narration file that you need to get a word that's in the pull down menu, you'll see it says split about halfway down. Click on the word split and it'll split the narration file into two parts. And then you'll be able to move the second part of the, your narration down the track so there's room for the mayor, uh, the experts person to play, uh, the clip to play and not be drowned out by you. And you can do this every time you need to split a track, especially a very long one with your narration. You split it already and literally just pull it down to the right until the mayor's clip is finished playing and then line it up right on top so that it is going to start hearing your narration as soon as the mayor's finished talking. Um, and then you do the same thing again. You bring in whatever next clip that you need so your 
expert number two, drag it to where the pause is in the second part of your narration and line up the clips so that you have narration on one track, clip on the below, narration on the second on the second track and the clip on the third below. And it looks like building blocks and this is what it should look like when you're finished. If you have wild sound, natural sound that you want to play all the way through, you cannot have it running while the clips are running of the interviews. First of all, it's unethical because sometimes the interview was done in a different place, so that would be lying. And second of all, it might be too loud to have like snowblower noise or music during the interview with the coach because it would be like having a double background sound. So you don't want to do that. So you'd have to get rid of it wherever the interviews with your experts or the mayor are, as you see here in this screen. So if you're going to run the whole file, then you basically split the natural sound and move it down so you're just covering your narration and not the clips, okay? See it? And the other thing to notice is you usually keep it quite low, so use the volume line again with the butt, with the dots and lower the yellow volume line so that it's not drowning you out. Again, play it so you can hear it and adjust as accordingly. And at the end, you shouldn't have very loud natural sound until you're doing your sign off. You see how I put the yellow line going back up again? Just as you're doing your sign off. Okay? Okay, so now what's gonna happen is you have, uh, have to mix it into one file. So you go to the edit on the top of the uh, screen, edit, select uh, all, and then select entire session, you say yes. And then you, so that all the clips will be highlighted. Then you go to File, Export, Multitrack, Mix Down, and then Entire Session, and you say yes. And it's going to give you a pop-up box. Here's where you give it the better, the, the final name. So it'll be uh, Besner underscore uh, Voicer Cheerleaders underscore the date. Pop up box and then in the pop-up box it's gonna ask you if it's a waveform you want to change it to an mp3 that'd be the third little entry there make sure that you pull down and save it as an mp3 it's gonna ask you do you know that you're gonna change the lossiness say yes and you want it to go to your USB right after it does that for you you will get the single mixed file coming in your screen. So play it through and make sure that it's always minus 9 to minus 12 decibels and as much as you can. And if you see there's a section or two that doesn't have minus 12, you can then highlight it just the way you always do by clicking and dragging so it turns white and raise or lower that particular teeny tiny section um, so that it's uh, pretty better, uh, the, the sound is better minus 9 or minus 12 decibels. Now, play it through. If you're happy, you save that file and the mp3 file that you save is what you add to eCentennial, email to yourself, put it on your USB, and that's what we're playing on the radio. Congratulations.